Be seated. Okay. You can start my 15 minutes now. And I fixed the clock. Are you glad Real Talk Kim is here tonight? Are you glad Bishop George Bloomer is here tonight? Are you glad I'm here tonight? Are you glad Harvest Music Live is here tonight? Are you glad the Holy Ghost never misses a service? Talk in tongues, I dare you. Speaking in tongues, tweet this. Sit down. Speaking in tongues is the gateway to the supernatural. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I try have the sanctified folk. Speaking in tongues is the doorway to the supernatural. Yes, yes, yes. That's the reason I don't understand backslidden preachers. who put the Holy Ghost in a back room or in a home meeting. Uh huh. Not on Sunday morning. I didn't mean to talk about your church. <laughs> well, but we are on a time schedule. Well, that's your issue. Yep. What did I tell you this morning? The, what did I tell you this morning? Seven thousand people here this morning. One of them got it. What did I tell you? The cross is a contrast to the culture. That cross is against everything in the culture that the modern church celebrates. Uh huh. Yeah. That's why they don't get healed. That's why they don't get delivered. That's why they go to church, but they're not saved. Yep. Oh, you thought because you went to church you were saved. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. How many of you have an automobile? Do you put it in a garage? Does it turn into a garage? There you go. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, waddle like a duck, fly like a duck, chances pretty good it's a duck. There's only one reason to have a body. That's to give expression to the life that is contained within it. Look at your neighbor and wonder what kind of life they got in them. Because God life is joyful. Yeah, God yeah. life is celebration. Uh -huh. God life is victory. God hey. life is joy. God life is peace. Yes. God life is life. Yes. Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I, God, will do a new thing. New. Okay, catch this. Something that he has never done in your life yes, Lord. before yes. uh -huh. tonight. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go out, come back in.
God been good to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I saw your babies this morning. Yes, sir. I saw your oldest baby pat your little baby on the head. Yes, sir. And say, I thank God for my pastor. Yep. Because, because my pastor believed and prayed, I have my little sister. Yeah. And your little and the little sister said, Who me? Because that baby number two was dead in your womb. Yes, sir. Use your microphone. Yes, sir. Your baby was dead. Yes. How old your baby now? She's four. She's four years old. Yes. Somebody and tell them God's going to do something to me tonight. Never been done. I'm going to be changed tonight. Okay, four tonight. people. I'm going to be changed, changed tonight. Changed tonight. I'm not letting RTK up here, and I'm not letting Bishop Bloom up here. To y'all, start obeying. Yes. We're going to be changed. Huh? We're going to be changed. Going to be changed tonight. 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 Tonight, tonight, God's going to do something tonight, tonight, tonight to me yes. that He's never done yes. before, before, yeah. ever. ever. The atmosphere, the atmosphere of, my of my expectancy is the breeding ground the breeding of my miracle. miracle. So come on, Jesus. Come on, come Jesus. On. If you're glad he's not dead, if you're glad he's still alive, if you're glad he's still vital, if you're glad he's still moving, if you're glad he's still true, I dare you to run, Brian Ferris. Alexander watching online just now got baptized in the Holy Ghost and is speaking in tongues all over his house. Hallelujah. I feel some getting started that may not end for a month. Yes, sir. Somebody show that the Holy Ghost is filling us with fire. What? Shout because the Holy Ghost is filling us with fire. Throw your hands up and receive it. Yeah. Come on, shout for the Holy Ghost. Cry out for the Holy Ghost. Satan, over Satan, power over sin, over sin, demons, demons. depravity, depravity. Depression. depression, power, power, wonder working, power, power. power. is on me now. Somebody scream. Well then celebrate. We want the power. We need the yeah. power. We desire the power. Yeah. Be seated. Behold, God will do a new thing. And you're like Martha, Mary, Martha, Martha. You're like Martha. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, oh, 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 I know that. She said, my brother will rise again at the resurrection in the last day. Do you know what she had? She had put off faith. 
Yeah. She had someday faith. Come on, Pastor. She had maybe faith. Yeah. She had to give herself time to give herself an excuse. Martha said it. Come on, sir. Martha said, Martha said, I know. That's like Jesus walking up to you and saying, uh, your baby will rise again. And you saying, I know I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to deliver this dead baby. I'm gonna put it in one of those little tiny boxes. My husband and I, we're gonna go out and bury it. And in the resurrection, my baby will rise again. Or, or, uh -huh. he could do it now. Now. Hey! Now. Now, see, I, I can tell how much now faith is in the room. God can double your church now. God, watch this. I'm going to freak you out right now. How many of you believe you could lose all your money in one day? Then how come you don't believe God could triple it in one day? You need to learn to shout a little bit. Somebody needs to dance on tonight on right now, on this minute. Okay, okay, be seated. Watch, 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 watch online, watch. Over a million of you, watch. God will do a new thing. Now. Now. Kidney stone pain just left. Gallbladders healed. A ruptured spleen healed. Cataracts, I rebuke you. Come off God's people. Come off right now. When? Now. Behold, I will do a new thing now, at this moment, in this season, at this time. Watch me. Henceforth and hereafter. Because Ezekiel said, what God does is forever. I dare you to celebrate that everything he takes off you tonight ain't ever coming back again. That every giant that falls is never getting up again. That that affliction shall not arise a second time. Show somebody and tell them your water's about to be wine. Water's about to be wild. And it ain't over, ever going back to water again. It's never going back to water ever again. Yeah. Hey. I said, see, now you're looking at me like I'm just talking. Yes, sir. God didn't raise me from the dead to just talk. Right, right, right. Okay, watch this. What year is it? Be seated. What year is it? Oh, there it is. Twenty eighteen. God's a God of timing, season, cycle, purpose, intention. Nothing is by accident. You did not decide to come here tonight. You did not decide to watch tonight. You did not decide to go to Elkhart tonight. You did not decide to send in a prayer cloth. That was all God. Two thousand eighteen. 
Uh, somebody that's really good in math, help me. Two plus zero is? Two. Plus one is? Three. Plus eight is? Eleven. Somebody tell me what today's date is. Eleven, eleven. Eleven. I don't do things randomly. This is God's night yeah. for your miracle. Yeah. Here it is. Be seated. It is God's perfect will to heal you. Yes. Some of them yes. mad at me. Yes. I like the mad ones because my anointing can handle you. A man with an argument is always at the mercy of a man with an experience. Yep. God took cancer out of my mother. God took cancer out of my father twice. God took cancer out of my body three times. And you want to try to argue with me? And if God did that for me and he won't do it for you, Jared Deal, I command pain yeah. to come out of you now. No. Now. Shout for me. I can't shout. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. Now. now. Come out now. Now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. You see, uh, 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 it is, y'all looking for new revelation. You want a word. Okay. Third John 2. Let's see how deep you can go, Bubba. Sister, yay, yay. Dr. Doolittle, to see how far you go. Beloved, I, God, will, above anything else in the known universe, that you be in health, whole, and prosper, even as your soul prospers. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word, yeah. and his word healed them. Yeah, yeah. Jeremiah 33. On, How deep can you go? Isaiah 53. Beloved, I wish above all things. First, first John 3, 8. Isaiah 53, 5. Uh, he was wounded. Now he either was or he wasn't. For your, shall my, my. Transgressions. transgressions. He was bruised for my Shout it for my, for my, for my, stop thinking I'm talking to everybody else. I'm talking to you. Right. Transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. Yeah. The testament of my peace was laid upon him and with and by his stripes, yeah. I was and am yeah. healed. healed. Well, if you is, shout. Yeah. 
See, you all hung up in fact. Be seated. You all hung up in fact. I have a question for you. What do facts have to do with anything? John 17, 17, Father, set these apart by your word, by your truth. Your word is truth. He didn't say anything about fact. He said truth. The fact was, I had cancer. The truth was, I was healed. You choose. You choose. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Now then, there are perfect, where the will of God is unknown. I'm almost finished. Where the will of God is unknown. Don't ever pray. Lord, if it be your will, ever again, as long as you live. Because all you do is tell God you are too lazy to get in his will and find out what it is. He gave you 1,166 pages. Hey, God didn't raise me from the dead to play with it. He gave you 1,166 pages of his will. Nowhere, not one time, did he ever tell you sickness, pain, malady, malfunction, infirmity were his will for you. Nowhere. Nowhere. Some backslidden, weak need, milk sop, milk toast, lily livered, jelly back preacher told you that. If it be thy will. Beloved, yeah. I will yeah. above all things that you are healed, whole, healthy, joyful, yeah. full of peace. Instead of getting mad at me and God, how about you get mad at you for not claiming what God promised you? Yeah. Well, Brother Rod, I know somebody. So they and their experience trumps God's eternal word. To begin with, you don't know them. Oh, yeah, I do. I was married to him for 12 years. You don't know anybody. You know the outward person. You don't know what's inside. That's known only to God. Am I preaching right yet? Okay. So... Where the will of God is unknown, perfect faith cannot exist. For faith to exist, the will of God must be known. I just gave you God's will. Did I? Did I just give you God's will? Is there any place in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John where anybody asked to be healed? And Jesus said, uh, no, I need to teach you something. Why do you laugh? That's what your backslidden preacher says every Sunday. Unless you go to church here. I don't tell you that nonsense. That's nonsense. 
if you being earthly fathers and your child shall ask you for bread. Excuse me while I quote the Bible to you. Will you give him a stone? Well, how come when you ask for God's perfect will, you think he gives you kidney stones? To teach you something. I was told that all my life. No scriptural basis. Experiential basis. I got to hurry. If God had not wanted to heal you, he shouldn't have. Right. Right. Let's see, I know y'all are saved. Come on, sir. If God had not wanted to heal you, then he shouldn't have. Right. If God had not wanted to heal you, then why did he allow his son to be whipped? God said to you, with the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. So either he didn't bear stripes or you are healed. Thank you, Father. And so are your children and your chickens and your cows. Okay, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be seated. Which of you being earthly fathers? Uh, if your child asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent? These are the words of Jesus. Which of you, you could put it up there for them to see. I don't know. Hello. The anointing is demanding. The sooner you learn that, the better. If a son shall ask bread, will you give him a stone? Can you, can you imagine this is the son of God? And he's asking the most elementary of questions. So your kid comes running in, slams the screen door and says, I need a peanut butter sandwich. And you go get him some rocks. God's saying, that's how silly you are about your request before me. Help us, Lord. If he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent? There's another one. I like the scorpion one. There it is. Because I like eggs. You ask your children for some scrambled eggs and you put a scorpion on their plate. That's how we act about God. Why do we act like that about God? I can tell you because preachers lied to you. They lied to us. They lied to me for 17 years. I'm almost finished. The anointing has been in my left hand like fire for the last seven days. In 1979, I was pastoring a 180 seat Baptist church, which I started in my parents' backyard with 17 people, 12 of which were my family. Can I come down there?
12 of which were my family. In 1979, we had about 120 people. Building seated 180. We were doing really well. People were being born again. That's all. But they were being born again, which is more than I can say for the modern church. Because God didn't ask you to make a decision. He asked you to be converted. That's another sermon. So, my sister, my only sibling, two years my elder, was in an automobile accident. I heard you, Holy Spirit. God said he is going to miraculously heal. Now, that's two different things. A miracle is a suspension of natural law. A healing is something that could occur naturally. God told me he's going to give healing miracles tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank if you don't need one, just sit there. If you don't know somebody that needs one, just sit there. All right. Here we go now. So there. She had an automobile accident. She drove her femur bone through her pelvis and lodged it in her womb. She was eight months pregnant. Shattered her pelvis, and now the top of her femur is pushing against an eight-month baby in the womb. Okay, she was saved. So like all we knew to do is say, Lord, if it be thy will, do something. She ended up on 35 prescribed medications a day. Boxes of Demerol and Dilaudid and, and uh, uh, what's another one? Huh? Morphine, that was it. Liquid morphine, the kind you drink. Syringes for the other and vials in boxes. She was given three months to live and sent home to die to our Baptist church. I would watch her take syringes and shoot them into her legs and in another hole in her leg, the medication would just squirt out. Her, her body was so pwned from so many shots. How sad is this? This is my sister. I'm preaching every Sunday. But I was told healing was for the New Testament and God might do it, but he probably won't. I was told God made us sick to teach us something. If God made you sick, he'd have to steal it. Where'd he get it? You think God's got cancer in heaven? And he's just saying, here, have some. The thief came to kill, steal, destroy. But Jesus came to give you life. Well, shout about it. My God in heaven, leap, shout, clap, wave, spin, dance. I don't care what time it is. Be seated. So we had some friends 
they knew a little white-haired man in Cleveland, Tennessee, named Norval Hayes. Last month, I was honored to preach his funeral. They said, if you will bring her to Indianapolis, Indiana, sometimes God requires effort. Sometimes God requires you to come to Columbus, Ohio. Sometimes God says, send in a prayer cloth and believe me. He will always say something. Because when you ask for a miracle, God never gives you the miracle. He gives you an instruction. The obedience to the instruction produces the miracle. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Oh, God, give me a miracle. God said, do something. The blessings of God are conditional. What does that mean? God says, I'll do this when you do that. It's that simple. So, they said, if you'll bring her to Indianapolis, Indiana, in a hotel room. I was Baptist. I had a beautiful Baptist church with a steeple on top and a bell that I rang every Sunday morning. Be talking to me about go to church in a hotel room, sit on a folding chair. These are the craziest people I've ever seen. They were talking in tongues in a hotel ballroom. Teenagers, college students were falling out on the floor in intercession and weeping like I'd never seen anything like it in my life. My sister would drink a fifth of vodka a night with the medications. She tried twice to murder my niece because an angel appeared to her and told her she should. That night, that little man wrapped his arms around her and prayed for her for two hours and 45 minutes. What's your hurry? What's your hurry? Two hours and 45 minutes. We left the meeting like that night at 2.15 in the morning. There were three nights. The first night he said, here's a Baptist preacher. Uh, We would like you to dismiss. And I'm like, it's about time. So I did what any good Baptist would do. I preached my sermon in my closing prayer. And all of a sudden I started saying, thus says the Lord. And thus says the Lord. And God would say, And I started weeping and I turned around to him and I said, I'm so sorry. He said, why? I said, well, I just said, God said something. And he said, don't you know what that is? I said, no, I don't. He said, that's the gift of prophecy. And I've had it ever since. Are you ready for God to do a new thing in you? Because you think what you've been doing is all there is. And I'm here to tell you, God is about to shift you. Be seated. The next night he said, Rob, he called me Rob for three nights and my friends put a note on the pulpit and said his name is Rod not Rob and he went I don't really care he was from Cleveland Tennessee I don't really care what his name is I just want his hands and I'm like what want my hands this place is freaky 
And my sister, he would come out there every night and say, all right, congregation, everybody shout, thank God Debbie is healed. And I wanted to throw a chair at him. She's going back home slapping my mother in the hotel room. She's sneaking out on the porch and drinking vodka and shooting up. She's got three months to live, don't you understand? She's not healed. Because I was all wrapped up in facts. So, it, I was over there. He said, all right, Rob. He said, everybody that has any sickness in your body, come and line up. And they lined up. I'm telling you one of the ways Jesus heals. Jesus heals by the laying on of hands. He also heals by the oil anointing of elders. Uh, Ted Shuttlesworth, that wild, crazy maniac for God, came in here two Sundays after I was diagnosed and preached for me, and I was sitting right over there, and he said, somebody give me some oil. And so the elders gave him their oil that we use for anointing, and he handed it to me, and he said, drink it. I did not hesitate. I didn't say, oh. I turned it up and drank it. See, you don't. At some point, desperation has to take the place of your pride. Yeah. And you have to do what he said. I have to do this. I have to do this right quick. Tell your dad to stand up and get out in this aisle. Stand up and get out in this aisle. Stand up and get out in this aisle. Give me some oil. Give me some oil. They took this precious man into the hospital to give him a heart transplant or to give him open heart surgery. Then they said, you can't have an open heart surgery. You'll never survive. He's a preacher. He preaches in the inner city. So I just believe God just put a new heart in him. Now! Now! I dare you not to be healed. Shout like you've lost your mind. Somebody shout! Get ready, Kim. Get ready, Kim. Tonight, God be in my help. I lay hands on every person in this building. One night during Dominion camp meeting, I laid hands on 8,000 people. I'm not in any hurry. I had this night and everybody online gets double. Yeah. Tell me what you're believing for. Do it right now. Elkhart. I go to her. So he said, he said, go over there, Rob, and lay your hands on that woman. And I turned around crying again. And I said, I don't know in this pitiful isn't this pitiful? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a preacher of the gospel. I don't know what that is. I've been in church all my life. Nobody ever told me what that was. You better stop just believing preachers and get yourself a Bible. Yes. Not a phone, a Bible. Yeah. I walked in, 
man that helped me start this church, I haven't seen him for years, grabbed me coming in that door and he hugged me and he said, Pastor Rod, it's still on you. It's still on you. It ain't ever left and it ain't ever gonna leave. Right, right. And by the way, it's seven times stronger than it's ever been. Shout revival! revival! If you believe God can heal every person watching right now, shout! If you believe He'll heal you, shout twice as loud! Hallelujah! Shout louder than that for your children yes. and your grandchildren yes. and your family. Yes. He said, lay your hands on him. I said, so he said, he came over to me and he took my left hand just like that and he spread my fingers out. And he said, now the Bible says these signs will follow those that believe in the name of Jesus. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He said, you believe the Bible? I said, yes, sir. He said, then very gently, very gently. Now, if you're Shambach and you get trained by Shambach, as I was too, Shambach say, hit them with everything you got. And Mother Parsley would tackle you. Are you tired? He said, now very gently, just touch them on the forehead like that. So I did. And then things got really crazy. This is 1979. I touched a lady and the entire line all across that ballroom fell in the floor. And I thought, see, you go, oh, go. I'm like, I've killed them. <laughs> They're all sick. I'm not playing. I've killed them. We had a lady in our church before we got the 180 seat building and she came to the altar and she was crying and I reached out to pat her on the head like that and she fell over and we called 911 and the emergency squad came. And the emergency squad man, one of them was born again. He said, uh, she's just under the power of God. And I'm the preacher talking to the paramedic and I said, what does that mean? I want to know if I'm going to be sued. I'm not hurrying. Three or four people down was a lady. She came back the next night. No, two nights later. She came back the last night. Two nights later, she came back. And she's got a doctor with her. And she wants to testify. So she and her OBGYN doctor who had removed her womb and her ovaries and her fallopian tubes three years before that was with her. And I'm like, this is going to be good. Now you're going to get sued, bud. She's got her doctor with her. So he went, <laughs> Tell the people what happened when Rob laid hands on you. And the doctor said, I gave her a complete hysterectomy three years ago. She interrupted and said, and we've been believing for a baby. And I thought, you're nuts. Don't look at me funny. God used a jackass if he wanted to.
and the doctor said, I examined her yesterday. Every organ I took out is back in her body. Don't shout yet, I'm not done. And he said, she's three months pregnant. Look at you, too tired to stand up and shout. But want God to give you a miracle. He prayed for my sister two hours and 45 minutes. The devil came and tried to pull her out of his arms. Leg at a 90 degree angle. Myself and two other men got on top of her leg and tried to push it down. She was screaming, don't let him take me. Don't let him take me. She weighed 92 pounds. And suddenly, her eyes came clear. Her leg went down. She looked at me and said, Rod, where, where am I? I said, what happened to you? She said, the angel that appears to me all the time was trying to pull me out of this man's arms. It was the same angel that told me to kill my daughter. And she said, when he prayed for me, it transformed. It was the most hideous looking thing I've ever seen. And it was trying to drag me to hell. But Jesus set me free. She didn't live three more months. She lived 35 years. And that devil is a liar.